So here we want to now understand the change in right hand side of constraint, change in resource or the demand, which is the probably the second case in, while we discuss the post optimality analysis. So this is a sub part of post optimality analysis. In my earlier video, we have discussed the change in the cost coefficient in the post optimality analysis. And so now suppose you consider an LPP again, whether it is maximization or minimization subject to uh, some constraint ax equal to b and x greater than equal to 0 and if there is any change in the resource vector which is actually denoted by the right hand side here it is b b is not a single quantity but b is a vector there might be m number of constraints so we write here b1 up till bm it's a transpose and if there is a change in this row then this change may change the xb vector because xb vector we calculate it as b inverse multiplied by right hand side so any change in b may correspond to change in xb so this may correspond to change in xb now there are two possibilities so first possibility is that the xb is greater than or equal to zero so this means if xb is greater than or equal to 0 that means the calculation that we calculate now with the new one b is always greater than or equal to 0. So this means that the solution is feasible and if it is feasible we already know what might be the optimal solution of the previous problem. So if the problem is optimal and it, it is feasible so we don't need to calculate uh, any simple excitation further here but certainly the only thing that need to be calculated is z which is cb into xb because there is a change in xb vector but the current solution is remain feasible now the second possibility is that with a change in this b the xb calculation which is again b inverse multiplied by right hand side this turns out to be negative in all or in some situations if it turns out to be non-positive or some of the entries in xb comes out to be negative then the feasibility has disturbed and if feasibility has disturbed and if the feasibility has disturbed then we need to apply the dual simplex method so in this case we apply dual simplex method and because dual simplex method works when the current solution is optimal but it is not feasible so in this case because we are doing post optimality analysis we have already solved the star problem we have already available with the optimal solution so the current table in this while we have solved the star problem the current table must be optimal as well as feasible but when we have applied the new b the optimal the feasibility condition has disturbed so this means it is easy for us to apply dual simplex method so the dual simplex method is applied to maintain the feasibility now let's take uh, this concept uh, in a question for a more clarity so suppose we have this example number one now take in maximization problem and we have this problem of three variable with two constraints and the optimal table corresponding to this problem is already given we see here in the basis we have two variable x1 x2 and we already have a feasible solution because one and two are non-negative and we already have an optimal value here so the first question in this case is discuss the effect of availability of resource from 3 9 2 3 10 so that means the first b1 is not changed but in this case b1 vector is 3 b2 has changed b2 has changed from 9 to 10 so that's the second constraint and the right hand side of the second constraint has changed from 9 to 10 from the optimal simplex table we also see what are the basic variable from here we can see which are the basic variable basic variable are x1 x2 and so from the question we can write what is a basis matrix now look at the column of x1 which is 1 1 we can see the coefficient we can see the corresponding matrix here 
so this is 1 7 this is the co coefficient matrix with x1 variable x2 variable and x3 variable so the column of x1 is 1 2 and the column of x2 is 1 4 we can find b inverse of this one with the usual inverse method or we can read that from the simplex table also now the columns in the starting decision variable when we must have solved this problem we must have taken s1 s2 as the starting decision variable so the columns which occur here in the starting decision variable they actually represents the p inverse of the current basic variable which are in the table so we have the b inverse and this information we can read directly from the simplex table if the optimal simplex table is given if it is not given only this basic variables are given we can write the b and so once we know what is b we can find the b inverse now we have the b inverse and we know if there is any change in the right hand side vector that might correspond to a change in the solution and for the solution we must need to calculate b inverse now let's take in the first case what happens in the first case so we want to now understand the change in the xb so in the first case new xb hat i'm denoting it by xb hat which is b inverse and the new b hat b inverse we have already seen now it is 4 by 3 minus 1 by 3 minus 1 by 3 and 1 by 3 and the b hat now is 3 and 10 and if we do the simple matrix multiplication we see it is 2 by 3 and 7 by 3 and we see both the entries are non-negative so the feasibility has not disturbed so current solution is feasible so if the current solution is feasible we do not need to apply any other method such as dual simplex method but we only need to calculate what is my z z is cb into new xb hat cb is 4 6 and the new xb hat that we have calculated is 2 by 3 and 7 by 3 again multiplying this we get 50 by 3 so that's the optimal value now we have so the problem is maximization z so z maximization is 50 by 3 at x1 which is we have now calculated in this one this is represent x1 value and what is the value for x2 this is 7 by 3 so that's the optimal solution now in this similar manner we can study the question number two which says discuss the effect of the availability resource from 3 9 to 9 3 in this case what we have been asked the right hand side of the first constraint so we see here the first constraint is 3 and the second constraint is 9 now here right hand side of both the constraint are actually disturbed both constraint are changed so again we calculate the xp vector in the usual manner so if we look now what is xb hat so xb hat in the second case is nothing but it is b inverse multiplied by right hand side and b inverse we already know from the simplex table and the new b hat is 9 3 we calculate this comes out to be 11 and minus 2 but you see here this is negative so feasibility has disturbed feasibility is disturbed so if feasibility is disturbed we need to now apply dual simplex method so if you want to apply dual simplex method we fill in the entries here now this table remains same as such as because the only the right hand side is changed so this does not change the body matrix so the body matrix i am writing from the given optimal table only so this quantity is same what is already given to us in the optimal simplex table so till here it is same and also the zj minus cj row is same we have not made any change in the cost so this is not changed here there is only a change so i am writing 11 minus 2 and that we have already calculated here now because it is negative so we we apply dual simplex method
सो इन डुअल सिंप्लेक्स मेथड वी फर्स्ट चूज टू रिमूव अ वेक्टर विद मोस्ट नेगेटिव देर इज ओनली वन वेक्टर विद मोस्ट नेगेटिव सो माइनस टू इज रिमूव एंड अकॉर्डिंगली दीज आर द स्केलर एंड टेक द रेशियो ऑफ जेड जे माइनस सी जे सो टेक द रेशियो ऑफ मिनिमम ऑफ एब्सोलूट वैल्यू ऑफ दिस अपॉन एल्फा जे सच दैट एल्फा जे शुड बी स्ट्रिक्टली नेगेटिव सो दिस वैक्टर टू बी एंटर एंड वी हैव रिमूव मोस्ट नेगेटिव एक्स बी आई वैक्टर एंड सो वेन वी टेक द रेशो वी फाइंड देर इज ओनली वन क्वान्टिटी विद वेर द स्केलर इज नेगेटिव सो दिस इज ओनली केस एस वन एंटर्स and x2 leaves and that makes minus 1 by 3 as the pivot element once we make minus 1 by 3 as the pivot element we can then carry it out the usual row operations we have x2 uh, sorry we have x1 in the basis and here we have s1 so this element has to be 1 and the remaining has to be 0 so with the usual row operation we calculate the data again and we see here now that zj minus cj is greater than equal to 0 also in dual simplex method optimality is always maintained the only thing we need to achieve is the feasibility and all the xbi which is the solution they are non negative so it is feasible so the current table is optimal and feasible current table is optimal and feasible and so the optimal value for z is 12 at x1 is 3 and x2 is not in the basis so x2 is a non basic variable this value is 0 x3 is also a non basic variable because which is not appearing in the basis so this quantity is 0 so that's the optimal simplex table in the third case in the third case it says which resource should be increased or decreased to get the best marginal increase in the value of the objective function so here the question is little more open that whether there has to be a change in the right hand side or the first constraint or the second constraint so that there is increase and how much change should also be done that's also not clear so that means we need to find the range on the change so let's see how we can do the third part so in the third part again right hand side of first constraint that is b1 range so we first calculate the right hand side of constraint b1 range and accordingly we can calculate the right hand side of second constraint b2 range and that both we calculate individually so in this case suppose if the right hand side of the first constraint changes b inverse is same as we have picked up from the same optimal simplex table here i write b1 and the second constraint is 9 so second uh, constraint right hand side is i have kept same only the, i have made a change in the first one when we multiply we get 4 by 3 b1 minus 3 and minus b1 by 3 plus 3 because we always want to maintain the feasibility so what we do is now put x b hat greater than equal to 0 this implies now both these entry are non negative and we find a common range from there so we have b1 is greater than equal to 3 by 4 and from here we get b1 is less than or equal to 9 and from there we see that b1 lies between uh so we have here sorry 9 by 4 so this one is 9 by 4 less than or equal to b1 less than or equal to 9 so that's the range on b1 if within this range the right hand side of first constraint is changed so the feasibility is not going to disturb and similarly we obtained range on b2 that is right hand side of second constraint and this comes out to be 
9 less than or equal to b2 less than or equal to 12. Now we come back to the question again because this question asked how much we can increase or decrease the marginal value and also look at this objective function. Now if you look at this problem again, this 3 and 9, the right hand side corresponds to shadow prices or the dual prices. So when we write the dual of this LPP, we may write objective function as 3 times y1 plus 9 times y2. So that means they correspond to change in the objective function. And also the uh, here the value for w1 we can read it from zj minus cj of the optimal simplex table. So uh, y1 dual first variable is 10 by 3 and dual second variable is 2 by 3. So every time we increase or decrease there is an increase of 10 by 3 if there is a unit increase in the first dual variable and there is a unit increase in the second dual variable by 2 by 3. So we can study based on these ranges we can study the economical interpretations as dual or shadow price are calculated based on right hand side of constraint. So we know that uh, in optimal table given in LPP the first dual variable y1 will be 10 by 3 and second dual variable is 2 by 3. So every time we make a change in our right hand side the change we can see from equation number 1 and equation number 2. If we increase or decrease the right hand side per unit so accordingly there would be an increase or decrease as per these given cost in the optimal value of the then formed current then formed uh, with the, this change so that's how uh, one can read the economical interpretation of the lpp